So uh, hi and welcome everyone to the five equality uh, hustings uh, 2022, this time for the local uh, elections. We are really pleased to have you here tonight. Uh, yeah, we know some of you will join us uh, sometime during the meeting, but we have your questions and we have your candidates, which is the most important thing uh, for this election. We are here to quiz your candidates to create a platform so that you can know what your local candidates are proposing, their views and have and in their diversity. So it's really important. It's a work that Five Center for Equality does to try and connect uh, local constituents to their representatives and their council. So um, I've got uh, a couple of uh, instructions for tonight. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, we uh, we are here uh, as Five Center for Equality to make sure that everyone can participate. So uh, our instructions is to provide platform which is accessible. Uh, we also are here to help everyone ask their questions. So we will read questions where, where someone cannot in person read them. Uh, and we will also make sure that this event is available online. Uh, it will be on our YouTube channel afterwards. So on behalf of LCA, I want to welcome all the candidates here tonight. Uh, I wish them well with their campaigns. Uh, and I want to thank them for taking the time uh, this evening to answer a lot of questions. We have four rounds of questions. And I also want to thank the chair for volunteering to uh, moderate and, and time keep this discussion. That's very important. And uh, I would like to remind everyone to uh, conduct these uh, hustings in the spirit of uh, fairness and equality. We want to hear the diversity of views, but we want to respect each other's views as human beings and understand how to live together uh, better. That's really what we want to do. So uh, I will introduce our independent chair for the evening, who is uh, Stavrula Pipiru from St. Andrews. Thank you very much, Elric. Um, I'm so happy to be with you tonight for this event, and I would like uh, all, also to welcome everybody uh, to the Quality Hastings. Um, and like Ulrich said, I'm a political anthropologist at the University of St. Andrews, and I'm also uh, the founding director for the Center for Minorities Research. I will be chairing uh, this session tonight, and I take this opportunity uh, to thank the audience and the candidates, okay, for attending uh, the 2022 Hastings for five council election and asking the candidates questions about matters uh, of equality. The event is brought to you by the five center of equalities whose mission is to develop a harmonized approach to champion equality, diversity, inclusion and social uh, justice. So I would like now to go to um, to present our candidates and for tonight our candidates are David Ross, Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party, Fiona McCowan, Scottish Greens, Rosalind Garton, Scottish Labour, Alan Knox, Scottish Liberal Democrats, Stefan Hogan Radu, Scottish National Party, Jackie Anderson, Alba Party, and Sean Elder, Independent Candidate. Martin Kindings, our independent candidate is not able to join us tonight due to an emergency, uh, but we welcome Jackie Anderson as uh, his replace, uh, replacement. We welcome debate on different political views, but we also encourage you guys to, um, to respect each other because we appreciate that you all come from different um, political opinions and uh, dimensions. So each candidate will receive one minute for opening statements. Questions are in groups apart from round two, which is in a group of four. Candidates will receive two minutes to respond to the round apart from round two, um, which is going to receive three minutes because we have four questions instead of, uh, of three. At the end of the session this evening, candidates will be given one minute for the closing uh, statements. Um, I will invite audience members to ask their submitted questions directly. If they're unable to or prefer not to be recorded, 
at all. A member of the FC team will be able to read their questions uh, for them. Please note that due to time constraints, this evening may not be able to answer all the questions, but we will try and do our best to do so. So if you have any specific questions for the candidates, you can get in touch with them directly after the hastings. So now I would move to Elric and the poll. Thank you. Um, for the poll, uh, Lewis has prepared a quick poll from previously. Uh, and I would love to update uh, that as we won't have as many live participants to the audience as we would usually have, we think we're going to do the exit poll as a live poll on a website where the uh, video will be posted. So that can keep ticking all the way up to the um, election and voting day. So I think that makes it even more exciting for tonight. So I think that's really good. Lewis, if you wouldn't mind sharing the initial poll that we did receive. Uh, yeah, of course. That would be great. I'll just check that we can. Oh, never mind. I will see. Can everyone see that OK? So we have done. It was just as um, the participants were registering, we just asked them a really basic question of what are your voting intentions before taking part in the hustings today? Just to see the comparison between after the discussions and your questions have been answered. So as you can see on the screen here, um, we've got a decent spread between Scottish it's National Party. Can't Is see anything, Lewis. Yeah. Sorry, not we screen. not see the screen, Lewis, sorry. That's weird, it's shown on mine, hang on. <laughs> if, if it doesn't share, you can always take a snapshot and paste in the chat. Sometimes mm -hmm. when there's a lot of people in live meeting, the, the screen share suffers a bit. Yeah. Hang on, I'm just seeing if I can see. Um, can you see it okay now or is it still? Would it help what? if we switched off our screen? No, you... no we're implying there might be a. Uh, what I'll no. do is I will put in a snapshot just now, just so that you can. Um, It'll be see easier. It. Yeah. It's because it's because it's a public meeting being recorded, so yeah, no worries. By the way, these are, will be the offcuts, so I will remove these things in the final video. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, the, okay. The blooper reel. Um, I'll put that in there, but as you can see, um, we have a good spread between the Scottish National Party, Scottish Labour. Scottish Greens, Independent, and then some that chose none of the above. Um, we also have a good range of topics that we'll be covering tonight, from poverty, the cost of living and housing, to the rights, protected characteristics and misinformation, moving on to hate crime, antisocial behaviour and personal safety, and then finishing off on accessibility and budget priorities. Um, and like Eric said, we will be running the um, post event poll um, a bit longer than tonight so that we can see those who wanted to watch it later, see what their views are as well. So. All right, and back to Stavrula for the Okay, statements. thank you, thank you, Lewis. Um, now, I would like to invite the candidates to make their opening statements. As a reminder, each candidate receives one minute and I will warn you guys in your uh, 30 seconds to the end and then when your time is up. Um, we have listed all candidates uh, um, in, in an order and then for your responses, we're going to flip this order so that uh, different people come to answer first. So now we will start with David Ross. Um, and David, the floor is yours. Dear David, you're still David? on mute. <laughs> Has the time started yet? <laughs> I think we will. Don't worry, give... I can start it now. Don't worry. Go ahead, please. Looks like we've lost David. David? Oh. Um, 
I Let's... could move to Fiona and then we can go back to David when we will have David. So now Indeed. we move to Fiona McCowan, Scottish Greens. Fiona. Thank you very much indeed. Can you hear me all right? Just checking. And I'm delighted to be here. I'm a member of Fife Greens and I'm very pleased to be at the Fife Centre for Equalities Hustings as we look towards the Fife Council elections. As a Scottish Green Party candidate, I'm a candidate in the Versailles Ward and our view um, of democracy is that we would really prefer to see democracy devolved down to much more of a community level because we feel that for many communities across Fife that the rather megalithic and monolithic Fife Council building might feel just a little bit remote and that communities may find that difficult to engage with. And I am particularly interested in what happens to people who are minorities within Fife and find it difficult to see in the council and the makeup of the council currently how on earth they might be represented. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, I would like now to go to Rosalind Garton, Scottish Labour. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Rosalind Garton and I'm standing for St Andrew's Ward for Scottish Labour. Um, the Labour Party already has a long record uh, amongst political parties in fighting for equality and it continues today to fight for these rights. These started with a raft of liberalising UK legislation in the 1960s and 70s, which included making it illegal to discriminate against someone on the grounds of their gender or race and included the removal of stigma and the outrage of criminality against homosexual people. Since then, there have been Equal Pay Acts and trade union legislation, which establishes minimum standards for people at work and a minimum wage. It should also be remembered that the Labour Party has always fought for the importance of local government, and it particularly does this now. It was the party that brought Parliament back to Scotland, and the record of the Labour Party, both at UK and Scottish level, is one of making life in these islands as inclusive as possible and making government as local as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Thank you. I would now go to Alan Knox, Scottish Liberal. Hi, my name is Alan Knox. I'm the Liberal Democrat candidate for T Bridgehead. Um, Throughout my adult life, I've had epilepsy, which means I've never driven. Back in the late 1980s, uh, when I just graduated, I discovered that this severely limited my career choices. Too often, 99% office bound jobs would be advertised with driving license essential. But thanks to the Disability Discrimination Act and the Equality Act, these days are gone. But I believe there's still many challenges to that face our, all our communities. I, as a Liberal Democrat, I believe that community should be at the heart of Thanks, everything guys. and that a local councillor should be a community champion. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now go to Stefan Hogan Radu, Scottish National Party. Thank you, Stavrola Elric, and thank you, FCE, for hosting this event. Um, I really look forward to taking part in it. My name is Stefan Hogan Radu. I am the SNP candidate for the Cooper and District Ward in North East Fife. I'm a gay man married to a Romanian and I was born with my lower right arm missing. Although I do tell, enjoy telling people that it was a shark attack on occasion. I believe that it's because of all these things and because of people like myself that stand for the SNP, believe in the SNP and mostly vote for the SNP that puts us in such a strong position to stand up for the rights of minority groups across Scotland and in Fife. We are by far the most diverse party in Scotland and we are definitely the most diverse group of candidates standing at this election. That's why a vote for the SNP on the 5th of May isn't just a vote for a strong council with a costed and deliverable plan for Fife, but it's a vote for a more diverse council that looks more like the population of Fife than ever before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. 
we move now to Jackie Anderson and Alba Party. Thanks, Chair. Yes, yeah, so I'm Jackie Anderson. I'm standing for the Alba Party. Um, you, you may know we're a new party, just over a year old. Um, so I'm pleased to be able to speak tonight um, and tell you a bit about our policies and hope they resonate with the viewers and, and the constituents in Fife. Um, what motivates me um, really is that we're still talking now about some issues that were you know, coming to us 20 years ago. Um, legislation, yes, we, we have legislation in place like um, you know, the DTA and the Equalities Act. Um, however, poverty is still a huge issue um, and these issues haven't really progressed much. We're still talking about them 20 years later. So that's what's um, motivated me to become involved and hopefully we'll, we'll get to a bit more of the detail of ALBA's policies as the questions progress through the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, we move to Sean Elder our independent candidate. Good evening. Thank you to the team at the Equality Centre for Fife. Thank you for facilitating this online hustings. I'm the independent candidate for the Taybridge Head Ward in North East Fife. As a qualified nurse and massage therapist, it will come as no surprise my focus is on health and well-being for all. Local government either has a statutory responsibility for or an influence on much of what drives good health, including decent housing, environmental planning, education and skills development provisions, economic growth and public health, as well as social care for adults and children. But to achieve the goals of improved long-term outcomes across communities will require a step change and paradigm shift in the role that councils play within local systems. To do this, we need to both renewed leadership and a transformed funding structure focused on community engagement and participation and therefore empowerment. My focus will be on the plan for Fife, which looks to ensure that there are opportunities for all thriving places, inclusive growth and jobs, and community-led services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Do we have David back, Elric? Uh, good evening, Chair. Yes, apologies, I had technical problems. I am back. Excellent. Go ahead, David. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you, Elric, and the rest of the FCE team. It's very good to be here this evening. Now, I've been interested in politics since I was in my late 20s, early 30s, and I joined the Conservative Party in 2010. I was first selected to fight in 2012, and it raised a few eyebrows locally that a totally blind person as I am had been selected to be a candidate. I was elected in 2017 as the Conservative Councillor for Dunfermline South, and since then, I believe I have been a strong voice locally and have stood up for many local issues, such as problems at recycling centres, getting a, a acceptable design for the new build in Abbey View, the new hall which is going to be built, and many other issues. This ex election is about local issues. It's not about national issues. This is about holes in the roads, bin collections, leisure facilities and seeing how we can modernise them to meet the increasing population. We in the Conservative group are committed to having good local policies and local facilities for people. People with prote um, protected characteristics, characteristics play a major part in our community and all the council services and facilities should be accessible to them. And this should be done at the start. This should be a given. It should not have to be asked for and we shouldn't have to battle for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. I thank you all, all the candidates for your opening statements. And we now move on to the question rounds. The first round relates to questions about poverty, cost of living and affordable housing. We have uh, the, audience, uh, the audience questions. A question uh, will come from Katie Thompson and it is about poverty. Katie? Ask you there, Katie. Uh, the microphone is yours. You have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Sorry, I've got a mute button on my thing I thought that would work as well. Um, so 
given the situation our country finds itself in, with people having to choose between heating and eating, and even those in full-time employment struggling to make ends meet, can I ask the candidates what their party commitments are to reducing this inequality and lifting people out of this soul-crushing poverty? Thank you very much, Katie. Uh, the next question um, comes from Ross McKay, and a member of the FC team will read the question for him. And the question is about health. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Ross couldn't make it tonight. Um, his question is, mental health provision is currently woeful at a local authority level. Considering we are coming out of a pandemic and into a cost of living crisis, this will only get worse. What would you do within the council to support people living with mental health disabilities in Fife? Thank you very much, Louis. The final question for this round is on housing and it comes from Karen McBride. Karen? He's not here, so I will step in to okay. read this for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen asked, how would you solve the problem of lack of housing available for affordable long-term lets in the East Nook? So it's a very specific East Nook problem, but you okay. could say it happens across five. Thank you, Elric. Candidates will now respond. Uh, candidates, you have two minutes each to answer these three questions. And I start with David Ross. Uh, so thank you, Chair, and thank you very much for the questions. They're very interesting ones, and I'll try my best to answer them. Currently, this country is, as the questioner says, in a cost of living crisis. And there are many reasons for this. A year ago, I don't think any of us expected Russia to invade Ukraine. Now, unfortunately, this has happened and it's a deplorable thing. However, the invasion of Ukraine has caused a massive increase in the price of gas throughout the world. We are a major user of gas. Many of us use gas for our heating. This is why we need to do two things. We need to find a solution to this invasion that satisfies Ukraine and absolutely guarantees the Ukrainian safety, but also deals with the problem of gas prices. But also as a government and as a party, we need to look at solutions for energy. These include absolutely going carbon zero, but this isn't going to happen overnight. So we need to look at other supplies, be that gas or oil in the North Sea or nuclear. We need to be self-sufficient. We don't need to be importing, if we can avoid it, gas from other countries. As for mental health, mental health is a big issue. I absolutely believe there should be more training, especially for those managing teams in the council to, to recognize mental health. But I think we have to recognize, unfortunately, that the NHS who deals with an awful lot of mental health issues, there is a criminal shortage of qualified staff to do this. And as well as looking at better training and support, peer support groups like Andy's Man Club, we need to look at getting more staff. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I move now to Fiona McCowan. Fiona. Coming in. Thank you very much indeed for this. And thank you very much indeed for the three questions. Um, it's, they are indeed very interesting questions and very thoughtful and thought provoking questions. But I'm going to come to the first of these on poverty and it is, as Councillor Ross indicated, it is partly to do with the war in Ukraine, but that is not the only factor. And of course, gas prices are pegged internationally, but what we could do in Scotland, we have currently sufficient renewable energy to provide 
electricity for homes pretty much at 98% of our energy requirement. The other Scottish Greens policy that would help, I think, with the um, poverty situation and the um, harshness of um, sanctions and so on apply to benefit claimants. Um, the Scottish Greens support a universal basic income and I know that in the past a pilot for universal income was run in Fife. I think that's now a number of years ago and I'm not aware um, of what happened. Thank you very much indeed. Um, looking at mental health, what the Scottish Greens would support is mental health services being um, delivered much more through primary care and so much more accessible through people's local GP practices as opposed to um, through a hospital setting. But I quite agree with Councillor Ross that that is going to need far more um, investment in training for staff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I move now to Rosalind Gardon. Rosalind. Um, thank you, Katie, Ross and Karen for your questions. Um, Fife Labour, with regard to the first question about cost of living, um, is already committed to expanding its holiday meals outside term time through the Cafe Inc um, programme. Um, but uh, you would probably not be surprised that as a Labour Party member, I will beg people who have cost of living problems to consider joining a trade union and fighting for a real living wage. Um, Fife Labour is also committed in particular to increasing pay for care workers who are a notoriously badly paid and absolutely vital group of people. So please do consider joining your trade union. These are the organisations organizations which fight for fair working practices, health and safety provision at work and also in decent pay. Um, but a lot of this concern about cost of living, of course, is due to housing. I'm going to look at that one next. Um, since 2012, uh, Fife Labour is pleased to have encouraged the building of more than 6,000 new affordable homes for rent, and it's committed to building another 1,200 over the next two, two years. Uh, committed given that building materials are shooting up in price, but what is important is that it's also committed to the fact that these will be energy efficient houses um, wherever possible. With regard to the mental health question, again, um, Scottish Labour is committed to fighting for a mental health worker based in every GP practice to help combat the waiting lists that have particularly occurred in recent years and particularly waiting lists which show up a huge problem of equality with regard to mental health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Um, we move now to Alan Knox. Alan? Thank you. Um, thank, thanks to the questioners for their very interesting questions. I think the the first question about cost of living, that there's a lot that should be being done by both governments in Holyrood and Westminster. Uh, as Liberal Democrats, the, one of the first things we'd like to see is that the increase in the various Scottish disability payments are increased in line with inflation at 6%, not the sort of paltry 3.1% at the moment. And hopefully the government think they think again in that. Again, there's a 250 million pounds worth of cuts to Scottish council budgets, which is forcing the councils to in increase council tax. If that was reversed, then the cuts to the council tax could be reversed, and that would have beneficial effect. I think uh, the treasury should consider cutting VAT to 17.5 percent, which would save an average family about 600 pounds a year. And finally. How would you pay for it? Well, I would suggest that there should be a Robin Hood tax on the energy companies who are making uh, obscene profits out of this crisis. Uh, I think a lot has been said about the mental health issue. I'm not going to repeat what people have said, but just a couple of other things that I, I think are important. Um, I, I think there should be a mental health first aider in every workplace so that support can be given to people uh, 
by colleagues and friends when they see that people are under pressure and stress and that would be something we would be supporting. Uh, we'd also uh, in make sure that there was strong support and working together with the third sector uh, who deal with these things. Uh, finally, in the sort of uh, affordable houses, particularly in East Newark, yes, we do want tourism, but I think that a uh, uh, control zone for uh, short term lets and uh, Airbnbs is required in that area. Over the past few years, Fife has built about 400 affordable homes a year. There's 16,000 people on the waiting list. Thank you, Alan. So if, you do, if, you, if you do the sums, that's 40 years before we clear the waiting list. We've got to build faster, a lot faster. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, we move to Stefan Hogan Radu. Stefan? Thank you. Um, I think I'll come to Kate. I think it was Katie that asked the first question, um, heating or eating. For a start, the fact that we're having to have this conversation about heating or eating in the 21st century utterly disgusts me. Um, I just think it's it's horrible and I, I'm going to say it, you, um, but 12 years of Tory austerity backed up by or supported by the Lib Dems at the first part of the, the, the uh, decade is to blame for why people are so much poorer now than they used to be before you even take into the account of the the mess that that we're in with uh, heating and um, gas bills at the minute what are we doing as a party what the SNP doing well the biggest thing which has been declared by a lot of different uh, charities is the child payment has increased um, dramatically which is seen as a complete um, game changer when it comes to, to child poverty in particular but obviously child poverty is also linked with the the parents of those children as well and i think that that is something that's really going to help again from what alan was saying there i agree with pretty much everything alan just said however about 80 percent of what he said can't be achieved unless Scotland is independent because the Tory Westminster government will never ever do that will never tax the rich companies but will never cut VAT to help the poor because it doesn't suit their mandate or their leader's mandate. To the second question, mental, mental was that 30 seconds, sorry? Yes, uh, the mental health funding. Um, we have increased mental health funding uh, at a national and a local level and we are um, training staff in every school to have a first aid trainer, uh, a first aid, um, a mental health first aider, sorry. Um, in every single school so that just like when we were kids we fell and hurt our knee in the playground you could go to the first aider as the same um, same kind of idea there's the dedicated member of staff in the school that you can go to um, and final thing that I'll say about the third question um, the SNP led Fife Council in the last five years has built over 3,000 affordable houses um, in the last five years and we plan to build even more to meet the Scottish Government's target of 110,000 houses uh, by 2040. Thank you Stefan. Thank you very much. I move now to Jackie Anderson. Jackie? Thank you. Um, so as to the first question about um, poverty, uh, uh, we have a plan, Alba's five-point plan, um, that would um, give immediate relief um, to families who are suffering the worst and individuals who are suffering the worst. Um, we're looking at a £500 annual payment to every low-earning household in Scotland, so anyone already in receipt of council tax reduction would have another £500. Um, we also want to give uh, free school meals to every pupil. Um, I don't think it's too much to ask and we believe that, you know, in Scotland um, we can do this and um, give children breakfast and a meal at school every day and not stop at a particular age or when children move from primary to secondary school. They don't get less hungry when they go to secondary school. So we want to give them it all the way through. Um, we, we would also propose to double the education maintenance allowance from £30 to £60 per fortnight. Um, this would again put, you know, immediate money into the households and the education maintenance allowance is paid to the children uh, directly. So they, you know, have a little bit more of their own money. The parents, you know, don't have to, to keep forking out for other things that the children might need. 
Um, we would also give um, free access to sports facilities for all under 18s. And um, that kind of links a little bit to the to the second question on mental health provision, because as we all know, exercise and being active is, is good for your mental health. Thank you seconds. OK, thank you. Um, and we would also um, increase the Scottish child payment to £40 per week. Um, as, as to the mental health uh, question itself, um, obviously the, the council has a role to play in this in the health and social care partnership. And you know more, need, more needs to be done in terms of that partnership working. Staff awareness training within the council itself is, is hugely important. And Stefan mentioned the mental health first aiders. Uh, Fife Council is already doing that. We have a lot of that uh, mental health first aiders in Fife House and, and in you know, the, the staff group. And it's being rolled out, as he said, to schools. Um, very quickly on housing. Again, yes. Thank you. Need Sorry, to Jackie. Thank we you. Need to Sorry, no Jackie. Problem. Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, let's move now to, to Sean Elder. Sean. Thank you. Uh, poverty is an issue affecting all groups in Fife. Uh, I would work with our welfare support assistants, Katrina, Leza and Nicola Jane, particularly in North East Fife, and ensure everyone is aware of the drop-in clinics that are available to those who are vulnerable, at risk or regrettably already stricken. I'll assist in ensuring access to the crisis and community care grants through the Scottish Welfare Fund, work with the Kingdom Community Bank, Citizens Advice Resources for Fife and Community Resources Network Scotland to get real time in the now help and assistance to those who need it right now. Involving service users will quicken the process by identifying specific issues, whether it be around access to support or individual requirements. And it is true, let's leave no one behind. I recently took over the publicity representative role within the community council here and I work to communicate the services and resources available to residents because some people just don't realise that there are um, safety nets there, there are funds there, there are grant funds, there are systems in place. So literally old fashioned communication physically, digitally for all to see, share and talk about and breaking down some of the barriers to these. Whilst nursing in the pandemic, I was shocked, dismayed, appalled to see the temporary prolonged closure of many services with staff either redeployed or ancillary staff working from home. Services like the addiction service on the NHS Fife estate. As a councillor, I would have challenged in the strongest possible terms without letting up to ensure services for all remained open and accessible at a time where people were struggling already and they were left abandoned made me sick. Affordable rental properties in areas like the East Nukes and Andrews, Newport and Wormit have become like hen's teeth. The needs of local people are continually being ignored in this capitalist state we seem to be verbally objecting to but seemingly powerless to stop. The North East Fife Tenants and Residents Federation recently conducted a survey and I hope you managed to submit your thoughts and answers to this survey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Now we move to round two. To round two we are discussing rights, protected characteristics and misinformation. The first question on justice and personal security will come from Emma Gibson. Emma? Uh, Emma is has not joined us, we sent an invite, but I'll read a question uh, okay, on the behalf. Okay, yes, please. Uh, so we did receive online a lot of questions about this. So we had, we combined a lot of these questions. We tried to summarize them in four questions. You would have had a round with eight questions. So you can see a lot of people are debating this moment. So Emma's question is, uh, would you say, uh, uh, what would you say to those who say the rights of trans women conflict with the rights of cis women? How do we ensure the needs of the most vulnerable are met locally? That's Emma's question. Thank Next. you very much, Elric. Thank you. The next question is about health and it comes from Isabella Millar. Isabella? Hi, I'm sorry, what did you say I was asking about? You health. were asking, you are asking about health. No, I wasn't. No, oh, okay. I've got a question in front of me here and it wasn't about health. Okay, what it's is your tick, question about? It's a tick about? box in the form, but never mind. <laughs> can, I, can I read my question? Yes, please, read your question, Thank Isabella. You. Okay, my question is, do you subscribe to the notion that women should not be given a platform to discuss issues <laughs> that relate to women, 
bearing in mind that sex is a protected characteristic in the Equalities Act. Okay, thank you, Isabella. Thank you very much. The next question is on justice and personal security, and it comes from Kelly Cowell. Uh, Colwell, sorry, and uh, it's going to be read either by Elric or Lewis. Hi there. Um, unfortunately, Kelly couldn't make it tonight. Um, so Kelly's question is, what is your position on the newly issued EHRC guidelines regarding single sex spaces? Very nice. Thank you very much, Lewis. The final question, again, it's going to be read by again you, Lewis, I think. And uh, it is uh, from a local resident and it is on justice and personal security. Uh, yep, yeah, this question is how to best deal with misinformation that can cause hostility towards the transgender and other communities. Thank you very much uh, for this round, because we have four questions. You guys, you will be given three minutes and we start with Rosalind. Hopefully they have a bit longer. There's an awful lot of things to get through. I know, I know, Rosalind, I know, I empathise. <laughs> Thank you to Emma, Isabella and Kelly for your questions here. Um, with regard to the um, first one about um, the rights of trans people and the rights of women, the Scottish Labour Party is perfectly clear on its attitude here. From uh, the time that uh, self-determination for transsexual people was suggested, hundreds of Labour Party activists and supporters, including three Scottish MSPs, signed a declaration on women's gender-based rights after expressing concern to the then leader of the Labour Party at that time regarding self-determination. Um, this declaration is uh, about the growing concern that women's rights could be eroded by changes being proposed to the Gender Recognition Act, where any man could say, I am a woman, and then walk into gender specific places such as um, women's changing rooms in gyms and sports centres. Um, the proposals would remove the requirement for a medical diagnosis, and the Scottish Labour Party has been uh, quite clear about its attitude towards this. It regards women as a vulnerable group. This is a fact of life. Women are potentially very vulnerable to male violence. Um, looking at the uh, question about the um, notion that women should not be given a platform to discuss issues that relate to them, again, no, the Scottish Labour Party would expect women to be free to comment on issues which affect them once again. Um, I would say that uh, I would consider and say with the Scottish Labour Party that women are vulnerable here. We have an extremely diverse party. I would um, in fact refute the assertion that's been made tonight about the Scottish National Party being the most diverse one. More about that later. Um, but uh, we are always going to be saying women are potentially vulnerable. They should be protected here. The issue about the Human Rights Commission was an interesting one. Um, I think it's very important when looking at the issue here of um, female only spaces it, uh, that we've been living for hundreds of years with male only spaces and women are now bursting through that glass ceiling. Um, they still have a way to go. I believe they still have a way to go with the Royal Ancient Golf Club in St Andrews, notoriously misogynistic organisation. Um, but we're aware that not every, not uh, both genders are um, equal here. Again, there is the issue of male Five violence seconds. and alive um, for this one. Have I got time to look at the last one? Um, the best way to deal with misinformation, just look at what happened in the school in Birmingham um, and how we fought for the rights for children to be taught that transgender issues, gay issues are part of normal human uh, um, populations. This is something that should start at school. Thank you. A lot to squeeze in. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Well done, just on, on the second. I move now to Alan Knox. Alan? Thank you and thank you to the questioners. Um, I, I think that, that there's a sort of common theme obviously running through all, all these questions. And I think basically, I think we need to respect who people say they are. Um, you know, it's currently it is legal 
under the 2004 Gender Recognition Act, which was brought in by the then Labour government, to transition from being male to transition. Um, and I think we, we do have to ensure that there are safe spaces for people. But even in safe spaces, cis women can be asked to be can be removed because they're found to be threatening other cis women. So that would be my concern about trying to that that and also I'm concerned about how you police it because if some if a cis woman who doesn't look traditionally female is in one of these safe spaces how how, how do you go I, I just cannot understand the level of conversation you've got to have and how do you prove who you are um a f feminist lived down campaigner was speaking to me the other day and she said women are women and trying to draw divisions between cis women and trans women's rights exactly is exactly the tactics used by people trying to diminish all women's rights as regards the ehrc statement it gives me a great deal of concern because it seems to be quite contradictory with various legislation that there is around in both the Equality Act and in the uh, the Gender Recognition Act. And I do worry that the whole thing's going to end up in court because people will challenge it because they're unhappy with it. So I, 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 I think we may be um, going down that line with the, 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 the EHRC guidelines. And I think we do have to stand up for misinformation about what trans people are and, and, and uh, stand united against transphobia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Alan. Uh, we move now to Stefan Hogan-Radu. Stefan? Um, thank you very much. Um, this is not a lot of time to discuss this extremely important um, issue. Um, I want to echo pretty much everything that Alan just said. Um, it's not often you hear an SNP person saying that about a Lib Dem in North East Fife, but I totally agree with what you said, Alan. I totally echo it. Um, question one, um, yes, trans rights are human rights um, and human rights apply to all humans. And as far as I'm concerned, there is no um, there is no um, reason that a human right human rights should not be applied to a trans person, uh, male or female, um, or in between. Um, to answer question two, um, I didn't quite get the question. I think I got the gist of it from some of the answers there. Um, no, women, all women, should have a say um, to their rights um, being discussed. Um, as a disabled person, um, I know what it's like to have um, people, able-bodied people, deciding. Um, disabled rules and or to make a building accessible all it has to have is a ramp there is so much more to to that um, and I believe that women have the main say not just a say have this say and what happens to women um, I ha I'm going to be honest I haven't seen the EHRC guidelines so I'm not going to comment on that just now uh, misinformation regarding trans um, people the misinformation out there is actually astounding um, the, the toilets and the changing rooms um, argument is irrelevant because that rule is not changing in the, the GRA. The GRA update, and that's all it is, is an update, is to make it easier for trans people to legally change their um, their gender um, on their, 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 their certificates. Um, we already have, if you go to any leisure centre, it's it's mixed changing rooms. Um, however, having said that, I completely agree that there has to be safe places for everybody. Um, there has to be safe places for women. There has to be safe places for um, trans women. There has to be safe places for cis women. There has to be safe, uh, safe places for, for men, um, young men, um, old men. There has to be safe places for the LGBT community. And I think that that's forgotten. And I hate. I'm a trans ally. I am a. Thirty proud, seconds. I am a proud feminist. 
Um, but I absolutely hate that the debate has gotten so vile. Um, and I have to say on both sides, um, and it is, uh, and I, 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 I just feel that if we had had a debate about GRA like we had had about um, same-sex marriage, things would have been a lot better. That debate about same-sex marriage was a beautiful piece of legislation that was discussed by everybody calmly and patiently. Not everybody agreed, just like the GRA, but it was it was, it was was done well. And I think we need to all get round the table and actually talk to each other because we don't hate Thank each other. Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move now to Jackie Anderson. Thank you. So I, I think, I think yes, all the questions are, are quite closely linked on this issue. Um, and my starting point is that um, the Equality Right, the Equalities Act, it gives all of us the rights, all of us human rights. No one is missing any human rights. Um, trans, transgender issues are covered as a protected characteristic in the Equalities Act. And the issue here, as I see it, is the legislation as proposed um, I don't feel is just a quick update or an administrative process, as uh, as we've been led to to believe. Self ID, I believe, does conflict with the with the issue of single sex spaces, because once someone then identifies into that sex or gender, um, then that opens up, you know, a whole a whole area of loopholes I, I would call them. So I think there is a lot of misinformation around the um, the whole issue and you know the removal of the need for a, a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria before you can you know pr proceed with your application. Um, so there's lots of stuff out there and I think the, um, the issue is it needs to be discussed um, in a calm way and our, our suggestion would be to have a citizens assembly on the matter. Um, I absolutely support the right that women have and are legally entitled to gather and discuss issues that affect them as a sex class. And I think more dialogue is needed, but the way the debate has been up until now hasn't hasn't helped, hasn't helped at all. So our suggestion would be take the whole thing to Citizens Assembly and um, have, the, have the issue looked at in a calm and considered way. Thank you. Amazing. Jackie, thank you so much um, for this amazing punctuality. We are moving to Sean Elder. Sean? Thank you. Firstly, I don't think the word cis is helpful or indeed inclusive. Sex matters. We all arrived on this planet by an adult human female. Someone's gender identity is theirs and it is not for me or anyone else to say what it is or isn't and should never be conflated with sex sexual orientation or any other protected characteristic. I have never heard anyone say that the rights of trans people are any less valued or any or in conflict with the rights of non-trans people. Too many folk are telling people what they should be thinking or saying. I'm not trans identifying myself, so therefore I have no business saying what I think the difficulties are for people who are trans identifying. Involving people in the processes and decision making is the only way forward. Instead, we seem to be excluding the people whom these debates are about. Representing humans regardless of their identity is of the utmost importance to me. By being open, approachable and factual in the way that I work, I will act without fear or favour and ensure voices are heard equally and people have the information and assistance to access services and resources that will be of help to them. With regards to the platform for women to discuss women's issues, sex is a protected characteristic in the Quality Act. If women wish to hold events or meet to discuss issues related to their sex, they don't need me or anyone else to tell them that they are entitled to do so. No building or event space can legally discriminate against a group or organisation either by perception or association. With regards to safe spaces within the EHRC, sex matters and women and men need their own spaces where they feel safe and not intimidated. Universally accessible spaces should be more widely available. And I know there are organisations working to improve these. Pure Gym and LNER are two examples Pfeiffer's use on a frequent basis. With regards to misinformation causing hostility, this is regrettable. There is education and courses out there, such as the Fife Adult Support and Protection, Fife Violence Against Women Partnership Training, Fife Health Promotion, Information and Resources Centre, 
the Fife Health and Social Care Partnership, Domestic Abuse Awareness Training and Fife Trauma Training Collaborative. These can all be utilised and we can all be advocates and supporters of these services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you. We move now to David Ross. Uh, th thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much for the questions. And I think there is a link between all four of them. I think we're going to have quite a bit of agreement here. I'll try and take them in order. The rights of trans people and the rights of women are the same. They're human rights. I'm a man, I have my human rights. A trans person has their human rights, a woman has their human rights. There should be no conflict between any of them. We should all have the same rights and they should all be maintained. Absolutely, I do not conform to women not being able to discuss women's issues. Of course, they should be able to discuss women's issues. They should be able to discuss politics and anything else. We live in a democracy. This is a free country. We should be able to discuss any issue we want to, providing we do it sensitively and do not cause offence or upset. As for the HRC guidance, I think I do support it, but I think uh, I agree with the Liberal Democrat there probably will be a legal challenge to it, and it's probably likely to drag on for a long time. <coughs> um, as for safe spaces, in our manifesto, we have committed to female only changing facilities in council facilities such as gyms and parks and schools. I absolutely believe these are right, but we also need safe spaces for men and for anybody, anybody should be able to visit a safe space. Misinformation, unfortunately, there is an awful lot of it out there. Education is one of the best ways to deal with this, educating people. However, a lot of the information doesn't come from other people. It comes from people on social media putting deflammatory or nasty things up. So I think there's a responsibility on social media operators to take a much tougher line with this. Social media is good and has many good purposes, but putting up misinformation about, thank you, trans, disabled people, homosexual people, whatever it may be, is wrong and it should be dealt with. And I absolutely agree that education, training, discussion, all these should be used and the value of factual information should be used to override any misinformation that is put out. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. We finalise round two with Fiona McCowan. Fiona. Thank you very much indeed, Chair. And thank you again to all the people who are asking the questions. In the Scottish Green Party, we believe that there is no conflict between the rights of trans people with the rights of cis women or women. And the needs of trans people have been shown to need to be protected. Um, currently, trans people statistically whether they are trans men or trans women, are at greater risk of attack on social media, attack actually in the streets, and so on and so forth, hostility and all the rest of it. So the Equalities Act, the Current Equality Act 2010, does allow women to have a safe space to discuss issues related to women because sex is a protected characteristic in the Equality Act, but gender reassignment is also a protected characteristic in the Equality Act. It's not um, exclusive. And part of the problem with the current process for gender recognition is that 
trans people have to declare themselves to have a mental health illness of gender dysphoria. That's how gender dysphoria is described, a mental health illness. So there is no doubt that some reform was needed. And there has been a kind of leap to assume that the Gender Recognition Act will allow men to falsely claim that they are transitioning. And yet the Gender Recognition Act or the bill um, will fine people who make false claims. So, you know, it seems to me that there is a great degree of misinformation clattering around this issue. And I think rather regrettably, I had a good read of the newly issued EHR, thank you, EHRC guidelines last night regarding single sex spaces. And I agree with um, Alan that there are likely to be some legal charges, uh, legal cases brought around this um, new guidance. But what um, I felt was that I could see why some women's organisations welcomed the guidance, um, Stonewall, Pink News and other trans organisations felt you, that Fiona. the guidance was going to give a legal way to exclude trans women from services. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, we would now move um, to round three. And round three is about hate crime and personal safety. The first question is about justice and personal security, and it comes from George Christodoulatos, and it's going to be read by Luis or Elric. Jumping on this, I think, thank you, Stavrula. I think you pronounce George's surname better than I would have. Uh, he's you. Greek. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the name is so, Greek. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, so round three, we did have, again, a lot of questions submitted in round three. We classified those under hate crime because on registration, people really indicated that it was to do with crimes, personal attacks and personal safety. So there's a slight overlap with the rights, but the rights debate was debating rights. This one was definitely to do with people being fearing personal safety. So there is some overlap with the trans, but our focus interpretation is that this is about attacks, personal safety and justice. Mm -hmm. So the question that uh, George uh, sent us was, how do you propose to act so that five council services actively and timely address such situations concerning, concerning antisocial behaviour or disturbance that included environmental, public health related, I suppose, and so on, uh, to ensure all parties' rights and obligations, including the complainants' rights, are respected and people's welfare is not compromised? by such incident? It's a big question. Mm. Thank you, Elric. The next question is about uh, uh, justice and uh, again, personal security, and it comes from Michelle Wright. Uh, Elric, are you going to read or Louis? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, okay, Louis. Michelle apologizes. Unfortunately, she was uh, called into work tonight, so she couldn't make it. Um, her question is, what practical steps would you take to support the trans marginalised and misrepresented community in the years ahead? Thank you very much, Louis. The, the last question of round three, com uh, round three comes from Tish uh, Wolfsong and it is again about justice and personal security. Tish? I'll, I'll read on the other okay. this one. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it's again the same uh, topic, it was about uh, fear of uh, hate crime. Uh, how will you support the rights of transgender women to access spaces which are safe for them? So again, hate crime. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much, Elric. Candidates, you have two minutes to respond uh, to this round and we start with uh, Stefan Hogan Radu. Thank you. There are three very uh, deep and very wide questions, but I'll do my best. Um, so question one um, from George, anti-social behaviour. 
um, and how we would deal with it. I think the investment is key, and especially for young people, having them for for young people, for them have having sorry, ugh, spitting over my words, for them having some place to go. Um, so initiatives that are in our manifesto, like quid a kid. Um, where kids can go swimming for a pound um, during the summer holidays has proven to be a great um, use of money because we can get those child, those kids um, and young adults off the street to be able to ensure that they are um, are are not just hanging about. Um, I, I, sorry, I'm dyslexic and I didn't quite write down the whole first question. So that that's all I've got for that one. Uh, question two: the um, trans voices. Um, how will we get them on board? Um, and get their voices heard, well, it's pretty simple. We need to listen to them. We need to actually sit down and have those conversations. Um, like Sean said earlier, we can't just, I'm not a trans person, so I can't tell you, uh, tell you what a trans person needs. Um, we need to listen to those trans people so that they can tell us um, and, and ensure that they get what they what they need. And that, if, uh, I think a good way of doing that would be through a working group and through actually getting people in or a survey and actually listen to them, uh, listening That's to them and hearing what they, and listening to what they they have to say. Um, and the third question, I didn't get time to write it down, so I can't remember it. So if anybody can remind me in 10 seconds, then I'll answer it. I can. It's basically um, uh, how will you support the rights of transgender women to accept safe spaces, basically. Ah, OK. Um, pretty much the same way as we are. So we're uh, in the SNP, we support the GRA um, renewal and by doing so, we will ensure not just safe spaces for trans people, but also for uh, women and everybody to make sure that they that everybody has a safe place to go when they are in a vulnerable position. Thank you very much, Stefan. We move to Jackie Anderson. Jackie. Thank you. Um, yes, it's, it's quite a wide ranging question. In terms of community safety, um, I think I, I feel a bit sad that, you know, the a lot of the blame of antisocial behaviour gets put on young people. And, you know, a lot of the suggestions are, you know, get young people off the streets and get things for them to do. Yes, young people do need facilities and they do need things to do. But in terms of antisocial behaviour, um, you know, you look around outside, you know, pubs on a Saturday night, you know, you know, it's not, it's adults that are in pubs on Saturday nights and noise and all of that. You know, we've all had probably experience of noisy neighbours who play music or who have dogs barking and all of that sort of stuff. So I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a much wider problem to solve than, than just to deal with, you know, giving young people something to do. We do have a community safety team um, and, and they do great work um, in conjunction with the police when necessary. And um, I think we need to do a bit more of that. I mean, we all come back to resources. If, if there were more resources, you know, these things could be tackled when the issues happen, sometimes you call for assistance and it's not forthcoming um, immediately when you need it. So, um, but I think the Community Safety Partnership does great work. And if we can, you know, somehow extend that or, you know, give give additional resources there and, and take it, you know, into education of the public more generally about, you know, thinking about, to you realise how your, your behaviour affects others? Um, and I think in terms of the, the second two questions, um, We've probably, probably covered the most of that, but I think dialogue is, is really important. And, you know, speaking again, Sean and Stefan have both said I'm not trans myself. So we need to be talking to the people who are affected. And if what, what they say they need or want affects another group, then we have to bring all of the other groups in as well to discuss, you know, solutions that would suit for everyone so that one group's, you know, rights or whatever didn't impact. On, on other groups. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, we now move to uh, Sean Elder. Sean. Thank you. Uh, local police and Fife um, Council have been working on tackling antisocial behaviour. You may have seen in your local areas new posters that have been put up encouraging you to report, report, report. If the data isn't there, resources cannot be allocated. That is what it comes down to. If you are in a low crime zone in comparison to other um, areas, your resources are going to be a bit less 
and so as a and in the community council we get our police report every single month and we know what's happening um so i would encourage people to in a practical way report it if you call 101 and there's a 20 minute wait or longer then you have the option to report it online using their online forms that's actually quicker because they have a dedicated team the community safety teams um going through those forms and it's, it's jackie's right it's not just the young people i mean it, we've got problems here with people who are driving cars um dangerously and that's antisocial behavior because it has an impact on the people who live here um we need to get back to community-led neighborhood watch style um, nosy neighbors curtain switchers bring them on um, if we are stronger as communities, then we can support our services better by, you know, having the resources matching what our needs are. Um, in terms of misrepresentation um, and marginalised um, feelings amongst um, transgender people, that is a travesty that feels marginalised. And I would seek to identify through engagement and actively listening. You know, we can we can't, you know, we're not mind readers, but by collaboratively working with the um, people to work out what is making them feel marginalised, we can put in resources to make sure that they don't feel that way. And um, basically human rights, uh, universal ex um, accessible spaces as a way of um, making sure people feel safe. Um, if they have any reason that they feel they cannot enter a standard female or male space for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Um, David Ross, David. That, uh, thank you, Chair, and, and thank you again for these three difficult and very, very detailed questions. Um, Antisocial behaviour as an elected councillor, I've learned over the five, last five years, is a very hard one to crack. I absolutely do think that work with young people at the earlier age, the better to teach them about behaviour and talk to them about behaviour is a good thing. We need to do it and we need to do more of it. But we also need to look at the reporting of antisocial behaviour to either the council or the police. It can be a very laborious process. It can be a very time, timely process. It can't always be, it's not always timely. We need to make it easier for residents who are trying to evidence antisocial behaviour to keep to keep diaries. We need to make it easier for people to get through on 101 if they're reporting one to the police. And the council needs more resources to deal with it. But we can also not forget that the person who may be accused of the antisocial behaviour, they may have issues as well. So they need to be dealt with sensitively and we need to take cognizance of their problems. As for trans people and misrepresentation, there are an awful lot of people, unfortunately, in this country who feel misrepresented. They don't feel they're involved. We need to do. A OK, thank you. We need to do a lot about it. We need to have forums. We need to have community workers. We need to have working group. We need to have their voices. At the decision making table, we need to know what they think. So anything we can do, be it through social media or forums or anything else that we can do to make the voices of those who currently feel unrepresented heard. We should do it and we shouldn't think about it. We should do it and it's not an option. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. We move now to Fiona McGowan. Fiona. Thank you very much indeed, Chair, and thank you uh, for these questions too. But first of all, I'd like to thank Jackie very much for widening out the definition of people that might be involved in antisocial behaviour to include far more than young people, because of course, um, people of all ages can indulge in antisocial behaviour when a particular event or happening is occurring. And I just as others have said, I think we do need a kind of twin approach. And perhaps if we go right back to the voluntary organisation Homestart, that 
works with on parenting skills. And yet those organisations are not funded very well. They rely on goodwill of volunteers. And if that was became a much more statutory service, then parenting skills might address some of the antisocial behaviour that can start in quite young children and continue through their teenage and into their adulthood. But I think as well, it depends on having community. And in too many communities, there is no longer that sense of having community. And we saw that perhaps start to develop more in the early days of COVID, when community stepped up to support the weakest members and perhaps some of these misrepresented communities that could have a voice. And I think that one of the um, ways that we can support the rights of transgender women to access spaces which are safe for them is to increase the number of spaces that might be described as gender neutral. And we're starting to see that in some of the bigger cities, in restaurants, pubs and so on, that have gender neutral spaces. And I think that is something that, but also I think we don't need to decide this. We need to ask the people that are actually affected. And a number of us have said this, and I would like to see that going forward through Fife Council. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fiona. We move to Rosalind Carton. Rosalind. Sorry. Rosalind. Um, looking at the first question about, uh, thank you, George, Michelle and Tish for your questions. Um, Fife Labour definitely has a commitment in its manifesto for the selection to crack down on antisocial behaviour, including investment in town centres. But I'd actually like to focus on the wider aims from the Scottish Labour Party uh, in its manifesto for the Scottish local authority elections, looking at the proper resourcing of community warden services. The centralising Scottish National Party government in Holyrood has centralised our police force. The Scottish Labour Party is committed to restoring community police um, and to fight against closure of police stations and a reduction in numbers in the police force. And this will include a campaign for um, local councillors to be uh, majority members of the Scottish Police Authority. With regard to the trans issue, um, I've mentioned earlier the concern in the Scottish Labour movement about self-designation of trans women. Something it's very important to remember here is that cis women would feel safer if a medical diagnosis were used for designation of trans people, and we would then naturally feel quite safe to welcome trans women into any women-only community. So this is possibly something that needs to be considered here, making everybody feel safe about this issue. With regard to the very, very uh, important question here of practical steps to support trans and misrepresented communities in the years ahead, I'm pleased to say that Fife Labour is committed to having a teacher who is permanent in every class because I would always come down to this is education, education, education. There's a concern in England about um, certain people in, around schools in Birmingham who've been trying to prevent teachers from treating children that it's normal in the human community that there are certain people who are homosexual, certain people who are trans, certain whom are heterosexual and who would welcome the opportunity to teach children that families take all sorts of different forms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosalind. We move now to Alan Knox. Alan? Thank you, Chair. Um, there's a lot been said, and when I saw I was going to be seventh for this, I thought I'm going to be doing a lot of repetition. So maybe just try and pick up some points that haven't been made by other people. I think, um, on antisocial behaviour, I think one of the ones that I, I think is, is toughest is when the antisocial behaviour is being carried out by a neighbour. And obviously, from a council point of view, that then becomes a sort of conflict between council tenants. Um, over the years, we've seen a lot of legislation being brought in to protect good tenants from bad landlords. Unfortunately, the problem with this 
that legislation that now seems to be protecting bad tenants from good landlords and good neighbours, which means it's more difficult if someone is extremely antisocial, uh, breaking their tenancy agreement, whatever, to actually evict them. Um, I, and therefore it becomes, it, the, the problem becomes self-perpetuating. Um, moving on to the uh, the trans marginalised and misrepresented. I think it's important in our role as councillors, we champion people in all communities and, sh and, and help them become role models for their community so that other people in their community think, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. So I think that would be how I would work, not just with the trans community, but various other marginalised communities as well. And f finally, I, I, I would agree with the point that was made earlier about needing m much more um, uh, uh, neutral safe spaces. I can't remember the word. Thanks. Thank you very much, Alan. We now move to round, we are now to round four, which is about accessibility, transport and budget priorities. We are going to start with a question uh, from Natalie Fisher, and the question is going to be read by uh, either Elric or Luis. Hi there. Um, so this section will be a lot more focused on the sort of how do we get around five? How do we make things more accessible for everyone? So Natalie's question is, if elected, how will you improve BSL accessibility for BSL users? Thank you very much, Louis. Now we have a question about transport and travel uh, from Lisi Kopey. And again, uh, Louis, are you going to read it or, or Elric? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, unfortunately, Lisi couldn't make it tonight, um, but her question is, at a recent FCE meeting on transport, I was appalled by reports from those with mobility problems of the poor bus service. The STUC believes communities should take back control of our transport system. Would candidates support a council-run service like that in other areas like Lothian? Thank you very much, Louis. Finally, we have a question on participation from Gordon Agnew. Gordon? Thank you. Uh, bearing in mind that this election will not produce any changes in central government, most of the election literature contains lots of pledges for new provisions or increases in existing provisions, all very good stuff. But given the constraints on local authority income and the mandatory status of much of his expenditure, where would spending be reduced to balance the budget? Thank you very much, Gordon. Now, you candidates, you have two minutes each to answer these three questions. And we start with Sean Elder. Sean, please. Thank you very much. Um, with regards to um, improving BSL, British Sign Language Accessibility, um, we have the Fife Assessment Centre for Communication Through Technology, um, and that is something that I feel passionate about in terms of empowering that centre, making sure that we utilise technology. We are in the 21st century. Um, we are using closed captions right now, um, so we could be furthering that um, making sure that when we are putting out our communications, um, if it's video format, that we're using alt text and subtitles, closed captions um, for our images and our digital publications. Um, with regards to the public um, service, uh, public transport service being council led, council controlled, 100% um, would support an initiative like that. The public should be the only stake and shareholder in public transport, period. Um, obviously, the SNP um, central government has um, finally uh, taken ScotRail back into public ownership. So these things will take time, um, little by little, and it's definitely something that I support. Um, third question there from Gordon, thanks very much. Um, we're paying more taxes than ever more taxes on goods and services, stealth taxes such as the standing charges to put our own natural resource, electricity, onto a privatised grid. There is money in central pots. The political will has not been there to find and use our own money. 
We have been trained to think the capitalist way. The Westminster model does not work for Scotland. And the one hand tied behind our back politicking mantra of the SNP government mean we are perpetually held with contempt. And it's quite tiring and boring, to be honest. There is another way. We are a sovereign people in Scotland and we do not and should not accept the status quo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. We now move to David Ross. David. Uh, so thank you again, Chair. Um, improving access to BSL. Uh, having worked in the past with people with BSL, I know this is not this is not an easy one. I know there are very good training courses on BSL available. And while I'm not, I don't think, in favour of 10 or 12 lessons for bus drivers or train conductors, etc. If there was a way that training courses, basic training courses could be given to bus drivers and train conductors, etc. I think that's a good idea. I also think we should look at ways of improving subtitles, captions, communications at bus and train stations as BSL uh, users travel by public transport like everyone else. So I absolutely am in favour of them. And if anyone has any ideas of what they would be, I'd be if I get re-elected, I'd be very happy to listen and try and make them happen. It's a difficult one on the buses. Um, buses are run by stagecoach at the moment. I'm not sure a similar system to that in Edinburgh would work. Edinburgh is quite a bit, and the Lothians is a bit different. There is a lot more rural, rurality in Fife. Edinburgh, the, the main, the main, there are other population centres, the main population centre in Edinburgh is, is Edinburgh in the Lothians. So I'm not sure it would work. 30 seconds. There seems to be some discontent about the, the, the bus service. So perhaps a, a look does need to be had again, though I would say I still think there's quite a bit of uncertainty going forward of how public transport sport is going to look after COVID. And finally, can you remind me the question? I repeat the question um, on Gonos' behalf, which is that most of the election uh, literature seems to contain pledges to make new provisions or increase existing provisions. But given the constraints on local authority income, where would spending be reduced in order to balance the budget? <laughs> That is probably the question of the night, and it's not an easy one to answer. I suppose one thing I'd say is we'd look at involving the private sector a bit more. I wouldn't, I'm not going to use the word outsourcing because it's not a word people like, but we already use the private sector a lot for care homes and care at home, and we would look at using it wider to see if we could reduce cost. We would also hope that the Scottish Thank Government you, David. Don't keep cutting the amount of money they give to local authorities so we don't have to make hard spending cuts. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, we move now to Fiona McCowan. Fiona? Thank you very much. Um, in the first question, how would we improve BSL access accessibility for BSL users? I quite agree. Um, I'm very glad to see that the meeting tonight is being closed captioned. And again, we need to ensure that public, in the public sphere across Fife, that there are suitable facilities for BSL users. Um, in the Scottish Green Party, we find it somewhat odd that um, public transport is described as public transport because it's actually not public. It's private transport and the only thing public about it is that the public get on the bus. Um, and I think it might take some time and clearly, um, you know, stagecoach are running a lot of the services in Fife and people across Fife have some concerns about that service. And again, I think it's something that um, Fife Council could look at and see if we could get something that was actually responsive to the needs of community. Um, election literature, pledges to make things better. Of course, we all want to make things better for the communities in Fife. And 
that might mean rebalancing budgets. It might be, mean being a little more creative. It might be looking at things that are wasting money and not being effective for community. And again, from a green point of view, we would like to see budget decisions being brought much more locally um, into community so that community has a voice in that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Fiona. The next person to answer the question is Rosalind Carton. Rosalind? Um, thank you for these questions. Um, with regard to the British Sign Language, um, it's notable, notable that the British Line, Sign Language Scotland Bill was introduced by Scottish Labour MSP Mark Griffin in 2012 with overwhelming support from Scottish Labour MPs and rather less support from other parties. So I think our slate is clean about this. Um, Fife Labour is committed to investment in skills and training. And I can say if elected as a councillor for St Andrews Ward, I would certainly be including the importance of British Sign Language amongst these skills. With regard to deregulation, well, I'm in North East Fife, so I look more towards Dundee than I do towards Lothian. But this is uh, a spread out um, region, so I'm not surprised that some people in South and Southwest Fife look towards Lothian. Dundee runs a very good publicly owned service, um, but under um, the deregulation of the Fife bus services, we've created millionaires. And the cost of a bus fare I found yesterday from Cooper to Dundee was £5.50. We've certainly seen a rise in costs. Um, no one in the Labour Party has to say anything about our credentials for nationalisation of transport services. This has always been the Labour Party policy. Please support us if this is something you're concerned about. With regard for funding for the Scottish National Party government, well, I would say this is an issue from the Scottish National Party government having consistently Cut, uh, cut down on funding for local authorities. So that's where I've looked rather than cutting in cutting the services in Fife. The Scottish National Party government has put itself into such a position that Michael Gove, the UK minister responsible for levelling up, says that he thinks it's important to keep an eye on the Scottish government's centralisation and he wants the UK government to give money directly to Scottish local authorities. Hmm, interesting one. Um, I would like to see uh, less centralisation and more funding coming from the Scottish Government to local authorities. I run my own business. If I'd been forced to peg my prices the way the Scottish National Party has pegged the council taxes over the last nine years, I would have been driven out of business. I think that's what's happening to our councils. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Uh, Alan, Alan Knox. Thank you for that. Um, I, I, I am aware that Fife Council has got a British Sign Language strategy. So my, my first um, question would be uh, to work with the BSL community and sort of say, how does this, you know, do you think the strategy is working for you? How can we make it better? I think that's how we should be dealing with that one, because I think we then communicate with them and then move on and improve it. Um, as I said in my opening statement, I'm a regular user of buses um, as I've never driven and uh, I'm extremely oh, I'm extremely concerned that uh, any any bus service uh, being transferred would cause a, a lot of expenditure in buying assets as opposed to actually inve investing in a regular reliable and cheap bus service. The one thing I'd also add is we should maybe be looking to more green buses at e either hydrogen or electric powered. Um, finally, in council funding, um, governments always see councils as easy areas to cut. Um, my view would be that we should uh, have a look more to ourselves to actual income generation for instance, using all council land uh, for micro generation of electricity um, so that we can actually in increase our own seconds. funding. 
and, and finally look at Beck's practice from elsewhere, not just in Scotland or the UK, but in councils throughout the world as to how they are improving their finances. Thank you very much, Alan. Now we move to Stefan Hogan Radu. Stefan. Thank you, um, and I think it says a, a lot um, that a Labour candidate has just quoted um, a Tory Westminster minister. Um, read into that uh, what you want. Um, going on to the questions, the BSL users, um, I think technology has to be the way forward. Uh, my husband and I are actually learning sign language. I'm learning two handed sign language, which is an interesting one when you've only got one hand, but I'm managing. Um, I think it should be taught in all schools um, as just a basic principle. I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's fun. It's not like learning French or German or Mandarin, um, which can be very difficult um, because it's your body and its movements. It can be very fun and it can also be very inclusive. Um, I would also say that all public um, service staff that are customer facing should know basic sign language. I think it should be part of their roles, which I think would be it, it, it would take maybe a day's course at the max to learn some basics, um, just like telling people where toilets are or um, asking for uh, telling them ticket prices, etc. I think it would be really good to do. Um, going on to question two. Um, yes, I do think that all public transport um, should be uh, like Fiona was saying, should be in public hands. Uh, the SNP Scottish Government has just nationalised um, ScotRail and it has been a huge success. We've seen people going back on to railways, especially younger people, which is brilliant. We need to go a step further though. We need to, we need control of our uh, of the railway as well. So I would like to see the uh, devolution of na uh, national Scot. National Rail, I've forgotten the name, Na Network Rail, sorry, um, as soon as possible because we need that. Um, point three, the SNP's manifesto in, in Fife is affordable, costed and deliverable. Um, unlike um, the Tories, we want to make sure that everything stays, everything public, all public services remain in public hands because that's the best way to protect it and make sure that um, things move forward in a good way without privatisation, um, which is just putting more money in the pockets of the rich. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, we finalise this round with Jackie Anderson. Jackie? Thank you. Thanks. Um, as to the first question about BSL accessibility, um, I kind of echo um, what Sean said on this and, and using technology um, as, as to its best effect. However, you know, that won't suit for everyone and everyone has different needs and requirements. So absolutely, we need to ask the users what they want. Um, I fully support um, a young lady, a young girl called Neve Braid in Glenrothes, um, who actually met with Nicola Sturgeon a couple of years ago uh, to raise this issue because Neve uh, was struggling in school and there wasn't enough people in the school that were able to, to communicate with sign language with her. So I fully support Neve's campaign um, and, you know, whatever whatever they say they need and everyone is different. Um, so that's my, my situation there. Um, as to the the transport situation. We had this question in a, a hustings at Octomarty last week and it and it's got me thinking maybe we should be looking at more community based transport. Um, you know, the X23, for example, Stirling to St Andrews bus was pulled. It was a stagecoach service and it wasn't subsidised, obviously, um, and it wasn't making money. But if, if you have a bus that seats 50 people and you're going round, you know, rural areas of Fife and, and I'm in the Howe of Fife and Tay Coast Ward and, you know, there's disproportionate effect on, you know, people who live in rural areas as, as transport. You know, it's fine if you live in town, you can maybe walk, um, but in, in rural areas... Thank you. Um, and as to the third question, um, there seems an acceptance in the question that we just have to keep cutting and finding savings in the councils and, you know, focus on income generation. It's all fine. But it's the service users who pay um, for the services and they're affected by the cost of living increases. So at what point do we say enough is enough? I think we've reached that point and passed it. Um, and fundamental changes are required to the structure and the funding, I think, in local government. Um, and for me, um, Alba is an independence party. It's a first priority and independence would give us those powers to do 
the things that we need to do, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, I would like now to go back to Elric uh, so that we have um, here about the, the live poll. Okay, so um, on that one, because we decided to remove the polls from this session, uh, this is great. That has given us about 12, 12 or so minutes extra to play with. So uh, what I suggest to uh, to everyone is, um, as I said, we're going. Uh, Lewis is going to share the chat, the, the link to the page, but we're going to keep the live poll ticking after the video gets uploaded. So that will be, uh, you can see, watch live as, as the votes come in and we share the information. And what I suggest to the chair, if that is okay, we can extend the candidate closing statements to have a bit more time. So the, the, the candidates can explain their, uh, Views and the feedback on this evening. It does that, does that sound okay, Chair? I'm so I'm springing that on that suddenly, but I think that's good because we got time. We've been very timely, so that will be good use of the time. So is that okay? We extend the statements for two minutes, closing statements. Absolutely, yes. Um, I agree with that, Eric. Two minutes is is per perfect. Shall we go then to the to the closing statements? That sounds okay. Let's go for okay. it. Um, the order um, would be the reverse of the opening statements usually. Okay, <laughs> the reverse. Let me go back. Okay, so basically, um, we start with Sean Elder, and I remind you guys that you have two minutes each. Sean, thank you. Thank you. Um, I prepared for one minute, so that's quite nice. Um, for me, it's about relationships, not structures and barriers. I seek to build a more locally connected approach across Tabridge Head to enable a strong voice towards a set of coherent and mutually supportive social and policy outcomes that cut across all sectors and services. Far too many fifers are struggling and this is unacceptable. I will involve service users in any processes and decision making at all times. I will open up the communication lines like no other councillor has in this ward before. I will act without fear or favour and maintain a non-partisan approach to my work. I am passionate about community engagement and I will work with local groups to apply for, execute and deliver funding and projects at a local targeted level. By being open and approachable and factual in the way that I work, I, you know, that will make sure that people's voices are heard equally um, and people have the information and assistance to access services and resources that are designed to help them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, perfect. So let's move now to Jackie Anderson. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I think that in terms of equalities, um, the biggest driver of uh, inequality for me, um, and it exacerbates any other issues people might have, is, is poverty and the cost of living crisis that's about to hit is is really going to affect more people than we could we could ever imagine and um, the five point poverty plan that we have will will provide immediate relief but it's mitigation everything that we're trying to do in in the situation we're in is mitigation and the council will say they're not getting the the funds from the scottish government the scottish government will say that they're not getting the funds they need from westminster and so it goes on. So I think definitely radical change is, is required um, because until you know we, we achieve that, we're plugging gaps, we're mitigating within the constraints that we, we are in. And um, I know this is not an election by independence, but my, my belief is that until we're independent, we can't solve these problems. We can only mitigate. We can only put in measures that help and assist. But as we, as we see, in any change of government, then those priorities can change. And uh, so it's for me, it's about tackling poverty in, in terms of the council. And there's so much that we do in the councils that affects everyone's lives, you know, whether it's education, whether it's care services, whether it's, you know, getting referrals to food banks or whatever. Um, and it's pretty That's appalling that in 2022, we're still talking about food banks, you know. And we shouldn't be doing that. People should be able to have enough money to live on. And, you know, we don't all want to live in luxury, but people want a life. They don't just want an existence. And that, for me, 
is the starting point, um, is to address the issues of poverty and where that exacerbates other issues where people have disabilities or other concerns, then we, we have to really prioritise that in faith. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. We move now to Stefan Hogan Radu. Stefan? Thank you. Um, I just want to echo what Jackie said there. I think um, she, she hit the nail on the head when it comes to, to poverty being the biggest um, barrier to people at the moment. If you want a party to represent you in Fife Council, if you want a party to run Fife Council that has a proven track record of standing up for people with um, different from different minorities, if you want a party who has a track record of running Fife Council and running it well, um, vote SNP on the 5th of May. Um, my name is Stephen Hogan Radu. I'm standing in the Cooper District Ward, uh, Ward 20, and I would be uh, honoured if the people there gave me their first preference vote because I, um, like Sean, I'm not in this for my own personal gain. I am in this because I want to make real changes and differences to people's lives, to all people's lives. Um, if you ask anybody that knows me well, I am a people person. I've got the gift of the gab. Um, I love talking to people. Um, my, my husband always takes the mick out of me saying, oh, what conference are you away to this week? Because I'm always at something and taking part in something because I want to learn about everything. And um, I can't say right standing here right now or sitting here right now um, that um, I will be the absolute best council in the world, but I will learn and I will give it absolutely everything to make sure that I represent everybody in Cooper and District, not just the people that vote for me. Um, and I really, really want this opportunity. I think that Fife Council needs to look more like the people um, in Fife, and that's why uh, the SNP um, is the most diverse party from what I can from what I can gather that's standing. We have more councillors, uh, more candidates standing than any other party um, in this council election, and we would be absolutely honoured um, if you would give the SNP your vote. Um, and like Jackie said, this isn't a vote for independence, but. Um, You've only got limited options on your screen if you do support independence. Um, and I believe the SNP are the best party for that. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, the closing statement by Alan Knox. You're on mute, Alan. Thanks. Thank you, <laughs> Stefan. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, the role of a councillor is that of a community champion. Um, I believe that in that role, you've got to go and find all your communities, especially the hard to reach ones, the disadvantaged ones, shine a light in their problem and, and try and bring them, uh, solve their problems for them. Or if you can't do that as yourself, make sure that they're in touch with someone who can. I think there's two to me, there's two clear issues that affect the council at the moment. There is a provision of affordable housing. As I mentioned earlier, we're providing about 400 new properties a year with a housing waiting list of 16,000. I think we need a step change in that. And the, the other area is in social care, where there is a real crisis with a lack of carers uh, for, for, for particularly in, in adult social care. And, and trying to make sure that people's needs are met properly um, is something that I think is a high, should be a high priority for everyone in the new council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, let's go now to Rosalind Garton. Thank you. Um, I'd like to address first a question which I found it very difficult to answer. We've covered so many different topics here from Karen McBride about issues of housing in the East Nook. Um, Karen, be assured, please, that Fife Labour is fighting very hard to reduce the number of houses of multiple occupancy um, in St Andrews and in North East Fife and against the holiday homes um, issue. Um, we will be looking at the model from St Ives 
to uh, make it impossible for new built houses to become holiday homes. We're on this on target for this one, so please do uh, stay with us. We're fighting so that more um, properties can become homes for people. But as a representative um, of the Scottish Labour Party, which is proud to have a leader from BAME Heritage, um, I would point out that even uh, insiders from the Scottish National Party have pointed out that just one of the 22 new candidates in the 2021 Scottish Parliament election came from a BAME background. Our record on this is very good. Five Council has been run for the last five years by a co-leadership of Fife Labour and the Scottish National Party. It's not been run by the SNP. Um, I would be proud to be elected to this, uh, this ward of St Andrews to continue the good work from the Labour Party and Fife Labour in particular to fight for the importance particularly of educational outcomes, a permanent teacher for every class. We still have huge problems with educational inequality in this region. A £10 million recovery fund for local communities and looking at this thorny issue of affordable housing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Um, let's move now to Fiona McGowan. Thank you very much, Chair. What a great evening this has been. And it's been lovely to meet other candidates and to hear what they have to say. From a Scottish Green perspective, we know that where there are Scottish Green councillors in local authorities, in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Stirling and Highland, that they can punch above their weight hold other parties to account, but also work with other parties to get the very best for their communities. We have Scottish Green candidates standing in 21 of the 22 wards. We have no Green councillors currently in Fife, and we are really hoping that we can ele elect at least our very first Green councillor, because our very first Green councillor will have the support of the whole party in Fife Greens and will seek to ensure that affordable housing, genuinely affordable housing can be built, that communities can have their say, that it is not all the say of developers that counts, that education and particularly education for those that currently struggle can be appropriately provided in schools, that green buses can run in our communities as another um, participant mentioned and that our country can be safer, greener, more prosperous and welcoming to those that are coming from other countries. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much Fiona. The final statement will come from David Ross. David? Uh, th thank you very much, Chair. And I'd just like to say how much I've enjoyed the hustings that this, this evening. It's been great to listen to other people's views. Um, I think we've heard tonight that uh, there are a lot of issues facing the Council and there are also quite a lot of views on, on how to fix the issues or what to do about the issues that are facing the Council. If I get re-elected in eight or nine days time as the results are on the six, I will continue to stand up to be a strong voice for my ward of Dunfermline South. I will campaign to, to help the council find a long term solution to fix the potholes. That's top of my my inbox complaint list. We have to look at, in, at new vehicles for bins as there are too many breakdowns. That's another that's another often complained about issue. Yes, we don't build enough houses and yes, there's too long a waiting list. So we do need to more houses. The party has committed to do that. We also need to remember a couple of things. We are currently in a cost of living crisis and everybody has slated the UK government. But let's remember that it's the UK government who cut 5p a litre off the price of fuel, price of fuel raised national insurance, con uh, the level of the, the threshold at which you pay national insurance from this July. 30 seconds. Thank you. Discount on council tax and other measures which they've introduced 
But yes, I think they probably need to and will do more. And finally, let's not forget that Scotland would be in a far worse state if we were independent. We don't need independence. It's the UK government that backs us up all the time. And a specific example of this is all the money that it's given to the Scottish government that they've given to councils during COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Elric? Yes, sorry, uh, my team was a bit frozen. So um, that concludes our uh, rounds of closing statements. And I'm say it is fantastic and it is credit to our chair that we are exactly on time. So uh, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone. You did fantastically well. And I uh, just want to say a big thanks to our chair. Uh, it is great to have volunteers to help us uh, to keep everyone in order and listening to everyone's point of view. Uh, on behalf of Five Center for Equalities, a big thanks for taking part and uh, all the very best for your campaign and all the very best uh, for your constituents. We, we want you to listen to them. Lewis has posted in the chat the page where we will upload this video. So uh, our work will be now to just process and uh, uh, do as many captioning as close as possible as as we can do in the next hour. Um, if uh, you want to stay in touch with us, don't hesitate. Just uh, drop us an email. You have our contact details. But I just wanted to say thanks and would like to maybe uh, hand over again to the chair for a final few words and then we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elric. Um, we now reached the end of the hustings uh, this evening. Um, I want to say a big thank you to all of you, to the participants, the audience, uh, the five qualities and the volunteers who brought this event to fruition. I've learned a lot today from all of you. Um, I'm privileged to, to be in your company today. And thank you so much to all of you who sent uh, your questions. And uh, Final, final thanks uh, to Elric for inviting me to chair this event and, and making this wonderful opportunity for me. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. All the best. Everyone can wave and say all the best and good luck with the elections. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Good luck, Bye. Everyone. Thanks very Thank much. You. Really enjoyed it.